Hi, it was Rio CloudSync. In today's session, we'll look at Microsoft Entry and Protected Actions. You as an administrator may want to protect certain actions performed in the Microsoft Entry console, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. With that, you're probably asking the question, why not use privileged identity management in this case? Well, first things first, privileged identity management, um, shortened to PIM, requires Microsoft Entry ID P2 formerly known as Azure Active Directory Premium P2. Um, and it also requires a, a sometimes extensive c configuration when your goal may be just to restrict creations of conditional access policies, for example. Therefore, protected actions was introduced uh, alongside authentication context labels. How do we go about creation of authentication context labels. Well, the first things first, we can um, access entry.microsoft.com, which takes us to our um, organization's directory um, and administration console. Down the left-hand side, we can scroll down to protection under identity and click conditional access. It does reside within the conditional access pane. Um, and with that down the left-hand side, you will see the manage function um, and then you will see authentication context. It will bring up a get started page with a few marks of documentations to refer to. However, it's, it's very straightforward. All we need to do is select authentication context. And with that, you can see we've got no existing labels in essence. That, that's, that's primarily what they are. Labels you apply to protected actions or prote uh, protected controls. Um, and with that, we can press new authentication context. In this case, it's going to be uh, restricts uh, restrict creation of CA. We're not going to give it a uh, description. Uh, we are going to publish it. We want to make it available to use. And uh, once again, you'll just select a unique identifier, which is the uh, the, the ID in this instance, uh, ranging from C1 to, to C12, uh, so forth. So we'll, do, we'll just select C1 in this instance and we'll press save. It may take a moment or so to propagate across the, the services itself. Okay. Once we've created the authentication context label in essence, we then need to assign this authentication context label to a uh, set of particular actions. Um, so what we'll do, we'll give this a refresh, just let this propagate across the service. And then we'll go into enter again, identity, and then roles and admins. You'll see here a uh, list of uh, all roles and admin, um, roles within the directory itself, uh, from application administrator, global admin, security admin, help desk admin, and so forth. And it will provide you the, the associated description in terms of what this role can achieve. We want to select protected actions in this instance. As I said, we've created the authentication context label within the conditional access pane. We now want to uh, apply that or append that to a protected action. So what we'll do, we'll select protected actions and we'll select add protected actions. You see we've got none existing at the moment. And then what it will do, it will ask us to select our authentication context label we've cr created previously. We want to press select and we can see we've got restrict creation of CA conditional access. Okay, so we selected the label. We now want to associate a set of permissions to this said label. We select select permissions. And you can see here there's a uh, directory um, uh, role or protected action uh, for creation of conditional access policies, i.e. create conditional access policies. So if we select this and we select add and we select save. And what we've done so uh, so far is created the authentication context label and assigned that to a protected action. Okay, and then with that we can use this label within a conditional access policy um, as as a target um, to then set a list of um, access controls, i.e., um, make sure the device is compliant, make sure the device. Um, enforces multi-factor authentication, uh, maybe it uses session persistency in this case, okay. Um, so let's go into conditional access, conditional access itself. If we select protection, conditional access, once again, it may take a moment or so just to propagate. If we go to policies and we select new policy, we're not targeting users in this case because our target resource is gonna be the label itself i.e. whenever someone creates a, a conditional access policy, because that's a protected action we selected, um, the conditions will then be uh, satisfied um, via whatever we select here. 
and the access controls will then take precedence. So if we select target resources, we then want to select what policy applies to. So we're not targeting the Microsoft 365 Cloud Services service. We want to select authentication context. We can now see our label has appeared with restrict creation of CA. We can select restrict creation of CA. Um, conditions may be uh, the device platform, the location of where it may reside um, in terms of authentication, that could be an IPv4, that could be an IPv6 range or a geographical location. Or if we are using the likes of identity protection, then we can use the user risk and sign in risk. In this essence, this is just an example. So what we're going to do, we're going to target a resource and our grant control is going to be uh, required device to be marked as compliant within Microsoft Intune as a service. And we want to select and we'll turn this uh, policy on. Um, so in essence, if anyone is creating a conditional access policy, their device must be compliant through the likes of the Microsoft Intune um, uh, integration okay um, and that's it in terms of um, protective actions and authentication labels I hope you enjoyed any other questions um, please do let me know thank you very much